can I teach an AI model using TensorFlow Object Detection API how to identify the subject of a painting? The only way to find out is by trying. And I think you may be surprised by the outcome of this project. But let's narrow down this problem first. We want to identify if a painting is about the nativity or not, which is a simple binary classification problem. During the last 2000 years since Jesus' birth, countless artists like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Caravaggio, Donatello, just to name a few, have created paintings about the birth of Jesus. So there should be plenty of training data for us to collect. Just in case you don't know what a nativity painting is, let me explain it. A nativity painting is a painting where the subject is the birth of Jesus Christ. When trying to identify a painting about the nativity, you almost always see baby Jesus in the center. And almost always you'll see his mother Mary and his uh, father Joseph around him. Sometimes animals will also be surrounding him because he was born in a stable. Or you'll see him in a cave. Often he'll be outdoors and surrounded by shepherds. I hope you can agree with me. There is no way we can write any Python code that can take into account all these different variations. So this should be a perfect project for a neural network. Without further ado, let's get started. Before I start, I just wanted to let you know uh, that I created this notebook with code from this tutorial here on image classification uh, with TensorFlow. Uh, this is not uh, using binary classification, it's using categorical uh, classification, so it's slightly different, but I use a lot of the code here to also uh, create my own notebook, so I think that's important to mention. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to import all the TensorFlow and uh, any libraries that we're going to need today. So you can find the notebook that I'm going to uh, run today uh, in the GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, also, you'll find the test data. The data is set that uh, I created uh, as a CSV file in here. So three files. You need nativity data set, other data set, and test data set. So download them as well, because you're going to need those files. Let's do that now. We first upload the CSV files with the URLs for all the images that we need to download. Okay, so now we can go through the notebook. First, we import all the TensorFlow libraries and the other libraries that we need. Uh, the ones I wanted to highlight, we're going to use Keras, which is a, a library that makes TensorFlow a lot easier to, uh, to work with. And uh, we're going to use Pandas. Uh, Pandas is uh, used for anything to do with uh, uh, like parsing CSVs, creating tables and data frames and so on. And yeah, that's, those are the two uh, libraries I wanted to highlight. In order to train an image classifier, we need to have a training image data set, a validation data set, and a test data set. Since we are training a binary image classifier, we will have images of only two classes, the nativity or any other images we have. During the training of our model, we'll use the training data set to teach the model how to classify a painting, if the nativity painting or not. At the end of each training cycle, Epoch, we will use the validation data set to score how well the model is doing by calculating the, the accuracy and the loss. The accuracy measures how many times our model got the correct answer, and the higher is the better and the loss measures the delta, i.e. the difference between the predicted value and the actual value. And the lower is the better. It is important that the validation dataset is separate from the training dataset because the AI model is very good at cheating. And if you don't separate the two, the model will simply memorize the answers instead of learning the intrinsic characteristics of what we are trying to teach it. At the end of the training, we'll also use a separate test dataset from the training dataset and the validation dataset uh, to do an independent benchmark of the model performance. And you will notice that we are downloading uh, three files. The nativity dataset, which contains all the nativity paintings only. The other dataset, which contains any paintings except the nativity paintings. And then we have a test dataset, which contains both, and they are labeled. If you look at these files, 
we have URLs here, uh, an image URL, a web page URL. So the image URL is what we actually uh, care about. The web page URL is just telling us where this image was taken from. This is quite important so that you know you keep track of where your images come from. Later on, they might be useful to know. So the same thing for the other data set, it's just a bunch of URLs. And then, uh, you know, we have here the actual image on the left, and then we have the web page URL where we took the image from. And then we have test data set, which is slightly different, where I actually mix the two labels. Uh, the two labels that we have is nativity and others. And you'll see here that there is the same structure. Image URL is the actual image. Then you have web page URL, and then you have a label here. Okay, this is how it was done. So we're going to be downloading all the images inside these CSV files. But wait a moment. Did I not just say that the training data set should be separate from the validation data set? So why do we keep them in the same files? It's true, but we are also doing some data exploration. We're experimenting and it is a good thing to have some flexibility. Typically, you are advised to have 80% of training data and 20% of validation data but this is not a hard and fast rule. Um, we might want to change this, uh, these percentages to see what gives us the best results as part of uh, our experimentation. This is also known as hyperparameter tuning. On the other hand, the test data set should be fixed so we can compare different models with different architectures in a consistent way. Here, I'm defining some uh, utility methods that we're going to use to download the, the images in our data sets. So we have here get file name from URL and the purpose of this method is just to extract the file name from the URL itself uh, and actually remove some illegal characters if there's any. Uh, it's a very simple method. I've only created the code that is needed for the type of file names I have. Um, if you have other more strange file names, you might need to put more rules here, but I kept it simple for now. Then I have here this method, download image. This download image is uh, a method that goes through, basically downloads the image URL into a destination folder. Something worth mentioning here is that we are sleeping. We have a, a one second sleep time between downloads. And the reason for having this sleep time is to make sure that we don't hit the rate limit that, for example, uh, Wikimedia has when you try to download images from them. They are quite happy about you downloading images from them because those images are, are free to use, but they will, they will control uh, how fast you can download it. So that's why I have one second here. So we have to be patient. So I'm going to uh, just run this cell. So now I, we can download images. We need patience. So I'm going to... Uh, I have to wait and uh, yeah, you'll probably see uh, this going a lot faster than it actually was. I'll see you in the future. So we've now downloaded the images that we needed and uh, I have here another section of code and uh, I shall, I'll just briefly explain why I'm doing this. Some of the images in our data set are over 80 megabytes in size and if I try to resize uh, uh, the image with Python it will try to load the image into memory and it will kind of blow up. So not a great idea. And that's why I'm actually having a separate resize method here. The reason I, I point this out, only I'm only doing this here, the resizing because the images are too large. Because Keras itself in the pre-processing pipeline allows you to, it will resize the images for you. Anyway, first I'm going to install ImageMic, which is a, a utility that allows me to resize images very easily and very fast, and it's installed. So here I have a resize images method that I've created, which does the resizing uh, from one folder to another. So we're going to be, you know, our data set is here. So we have here our data set. So the, this is the training and uh, validation data set, and here is Below you can see the test data set. So the, the resize images is going to copy the images from this folder into another folder, which is going to be our destination folder, and it will be resized. So let's pull this method. And now here we resize the images. So all the images have been resized. Um, all the images are here in this folder, the resize folder. And the resize folder has the training and validation data set here. And this is the test data set. And you can see the folders, they have two labels here, nativity and others. And the same for the test data set. 
Now, because we are going to be using uh, Keras, uh, this method called image dataset from directory, uh, this will, this method actually loads the, all the images from the directory in, into memory, into a, basically a tf.data.dataset. Because we're using a binary cross entropy, uh, for our model, we need to make sure the labels are either a zero or a one. So we need to map nativity. So this name here needs to become a one and this name here needs to become a zero. So that's all we need to do. So I've just written very simple code, nothing special. Uh, just I'm just renaming the folders, as you can see here and here. So I'm just going to run that. We should see that now the folders are renamed. The next step, let's just do a count of all the images that we have. So we have 454 images, that's for the resized data set. So let's take a look at some of the images that we have in, in that uh, data set. You can see here, this is an image from the nativity data set and another one here, clearly nativity. And then some other uh, random paintings that uh, we have in others data set. Well, this one looks almost like, this almost looks like a nativity painting, but it's not. Um, so as you can see, it's a bit tricky sometimes to figure out even for a human being, imagine our AI model. Okay, there's another one here. This is a, 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 a straightforward uh, image to classify for us. Okay, so now we have here some parameters. Okay, so the batch size that we're going to use is uh, 32. The image height and the image width. I'm going to uh, go with 300. And uh, I have to say that the, the resolution of your image can affect the results. Uh, before I was trying with 150 pixels and I was getting worse results than what I get with 300 pixels. So I'm going to start with the, this optimal size. Uh, maybe I can still go up uh, further. So it's quite possible that the, the higher the resolution is, the, the better the results are. But it's not straightforward uh, so anyway I have good enough results with 300 pixels by 300 pixels so I'm going to uh, run with that for now okay here here we have we're going to load our images from the training data set into uh, uh, an object well this is not exact it's not going to load everything uh, all at once it's just going to uh, create a reference to these images and it's going to also uh, allow us to uh, split. So here, this is uh, where we actually decide to split the training data from the validation data. So here, uh, you'll notice this parameter called validation split. So here we are saying we want 0.2, 20% uh, is going to be test data. Uh, sorry, 20% is going to be validation data. Okay, 80% is going to be training data. And then we use a seed here. Uh, this number is important because uh, we're going to have to call this method again for the validation data set. So this is a trained data set. And then the validation data set needs to use this, the, the same seed number so it gets the reminder of the images. If you uh, have different seeds, then you're going to be mixing training images with validation images. And that's not a good thing. As we know, our model is very good at uh, basically uh, cheating, really. And uh, notice here also this parameter label mode. This is important that you have. It should be label mode set to binary for binary classification. So let's run this. You can see 452 files are belong to, to the two classes that we have. And it's using 362 uh, images for training. And uh, when you we run this one, it's going to use the reminder for, for the validation data set. So we have now a third call here for test data directory. The test data set is completely independent, so I don't need to have the same seed number. So this is just going to load all the test data that we have into this object. And we have 37 uh, images for our test data set. And let's just see what uh, class names we have in our train data set. We have zero and one. One is nativity and zero is others. So the next step is just for us to visualize our images. So we're going to print nine images and using matplotlib, we're going to plot them. You can see here examples of, this is a, just a random painting and then we have the nativity data set, random painting. It's random in a way, like it's not what we want to identify. 
and then we have nativity here and nativity here. Okay, so this is a, a sample of what we have in our train data set. Okay, so here we're going to just take a very quick look at our uh, batch size. Uh, so we've 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 gone with uh, 32 of batch size, and remember we use 300 pixels uh, width and 300 pixels height. And you can see here, this is a tensor, right? This is actually printing uh, the value of the tensor. So we have a, a tensor for the image batch and you'll see the there's 32 items, 32 images really. And then we have 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And then we have three is basically RGB, right? So the colors, they all have three uh, cells. And then for the labels, it's just 32 labels and it's a single dimension, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so we've run that. Okay, so some of this code here is for um, performance, as you can see. The idea is that uh, we are trying to load as many images in memory as possible at the same time so that it doesn't go to disk all the time. Because whenever you're doing the training, it can be much slower if you, you have to go to, to train uh, to basically fetch the images from disk. Here, uh, we have a method that I've defined to help us uh, test uh, the model against the test data set. This will give us a very nice visualization uh, of all the 35 images that we have against the model to see if whether the model uh, gets, uh, gets it right or not. This is an independent benchmark, right, from the other benchmark that we're going to get, which is normally done after training the model against the validation data set. So let's go this uh, method. Okay. So the next step, this is uh, called normalization. As we know, uh, RGB are in uh, the 0 to uh, 255 range, and this is not really great for a neural network because in general you should keep your input values as small as possible. Um, in fact, the, the neural network likes uh, values between 0 and 1, and that's why we do this uh, step here. Uh, you'll see it all the time in all the different TensorFlow uh, tutorials you'll do. You'll see uh, this uh, normalization. So all we are doing is dividing all the different colors by 255 so that they they fit between 0 and 1. This is good for the, the, the GPU, right? Okay, keep the numbers like that. So here it's an example of how you could uh, do the normalization uh, in a different way. So th the first example here, this is going to be part of the model itself as one of the layers. And you can see it, uh, in fact, I can show it here. 